Thanks for joining me today. We are going to do some card crafting and this is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey and we're going to use all of this gorgeous washi tape. Washi tape is one of those things that I think people either love it or hate it or maybe use it or don't use it. I'm one of those people that I do have some of it. I don't use it a ton but when I do I really like the outcome. So today I decided I needed to use some of this beautiful washi tape I've been hoarding for a little bit. So this set is all geometric shapes and kind of outer space stuff and things like that. So I'm going to use my sticky scissors. This comes in different widths. The hardest thing for me about washi sometimes is finding where it starts. And so at first I was going to use this card base but then I decided that it's really a lot easier if you can use a card front so a piece of paper that you'll attach to the card base itself that way you can wrap that washi around it so I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock and I'm going to make it just a bit smaller than my card base so I'm going to use a 5x7 card base which is a little bit larger than my normal I'll cut it down about a quarter of an inch less than that I so I don't have to trim it later on because I'm going to fold that washi around it so I'm going to want to make sure that that stays adhered. So I want to get this card front cut in advance. So I'm just using my guillotine trimmer to do that. I have different trimmers, but I tend to do that when I just need to whack off a couple sides <laughs> and I had a couple sheets of paper. Here we go again with the washi. And again, this is kind of a outer spacey kind of grouping of washi tape. And I decided to put it on an angle, which can create a really pretty background. And I'm trying to make sure I alternate a little bit between darker colors and some of the whiter colors. I also have some beige pieces in this as well. I have this a little bit sped up so that you don't have to see me try and find the ends of all these washi tapes. And then also it's just really just attaching it all next to each other. And when it's on an angle like this, I just kind of went back and forth, back and forth, and made sure that I covered the entire card front. The beautiful thing about washi is you can actually use it as a removable tape because the adhesive is very gentle. It's not very sticky. So you can do a couple of things when you're going to ad adhere this to your paper. You can either use double stick tape on your paper. You could use a maybe a slow drying glue. You can use a Sizzix double-sided adhesive sheets. You can do whatever works well for you. In this instance, because I knew I was going to be able to curl it around the edges of the paper, which is why I went with a card front instead of the card base, I'm going to be able to tape it down in the back or glue it down in the back, whichever I decide to do. <laughs> and that way I'll know that it won't move. So that's the one thing about washi is that it will you know start to curl up if you don't have it adhered down in some way or another. We'll see this in just a minute when I'm done with this and I really liked that sun one. Just gonna get her lips and her nose in that one but I think that'll be cute as well. So lots of fun little washi tapes here and sometimes these are nice for a masculine card and as you know recently I've been making tons and tons of birthday cards so I think today I'm going to make non-birthday cards <laughs> and we'll see what I decide to do with these, but I like a good masculine card when I can create one. So this is the last little piece I need. I just need a little teeny tiny corner, and that will finish the washi for now. So you can see that's a super fast process. So I'm going to just take all this washi, and I'm going to turn it over and make sure it's pretty tight, and that way I can then adhere it down from the back. In those corners, you just want to make sure that those look nice and crisp. And then you have a beautiful piece of card front. I think that looks nice. So now I'm just going to take some regular old tape and I'm just going to tape down the edges so that they don't inadvertently move. I do have them all kind of different sizes. So if I see that I didn't get a piece, I'll just add another little piece to it. For the most part, that one was pretty easy and I got them all down. The second one, I'm going to use these country type washi and they're almost all the same width. I have like three that are a little bit wider, but for the most part, they are all the same size. 
And here's where I pull those three that are kind of medium sized ones. I like to do washi in the same family. So it's either in the same color family or in the same that I just did the last one was kind of all outer space kind of stuff or geometric shapes. And this is more like a country feel to me with some flowers and some dots, some ruler print and some newspaper print. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just putting it all down and I sort of started in an odd spot. I probably should have started at the top or the bottom, but I started in the middle and it'll work out just fine. But I'm just putting pieces at different lengths. And what that does for you is it offers just a little bit more interest because you're going to have different lengths and you're going to have different pieces and they all really don't match up. And here I pulled out some really skinny glitter washi. The glitter washi for me doesn't adhere well at all. So I'm setting it down there, but I know it's not going to stay. So I'll end up gluing that down because it'll move on the paper if I don't do that. So this one's like a cute plaid. So I'm just going through and I am adhering these and I sped this up significantly. So I don't normally move that fast, but I just wanted, you guys saw what I did last time. And these are even a little bit simpler because they're straight. Although here you saw that I didn't have those quite as straight as I wanted to. So I redid them. And that one kind of has a postage stamp look to it. So here I'm going to put the glitter ones wherever I used that, those three that were a little bit bigger sized so that way I can not only add a little interest with the glitter but then I can fix the width difference between the smaller washi and that medium washi. And so again I'm doing the exact same thing I'm just making sure that I get washi down everywhere and then at the end we'll adhere it behind and like I said I will do something with that glitter washi because that's a little bit much. And so I did have a medium sized one from the previous grouping. So I pulled that out. It, those are like little notes or something. And so I used those in there just to make that dis difference up. So a lot of these reminded me a little bit of like wallpaper kind of paper or wallpaper washi. They're all kind of have a country feel to me. And you see here, I'm just trying to make sure that they aren't all sitting on each other. I'm trying to use different colors. And then here, because that's the medium one that's a little bit thicker, I decided to just go all the way across with that one. And then I won't have any issues where it's it's too big of a space. I have just a couple that plum color and then a blue color that are just a solid color and everything else has a pattern of some sort on it. And some of these are really nice because they have totally different patterns throughout. So then if I want to, I can cut different parts of the washi and get different aspects. You get thicker washi that has pictures on it. You can actually do lots of things with those pictures. Sorry if my head gets in here once in a while. I'm using a different camera today and it's at a different angle and so I'm not used to <laughs> that and so my head pops in when I'm trying to line things up. And I really like this specific washi. It's They look a little bit like stamps. So I'm almost done here. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of that white washi tape from the first grouping I had and that will fill that little space in and then I'm just going to add a few more where I have a few empty spaces and we are set to go. All right so it's full and you can see it just looks a little bit different right it's almost like when you use up your scraps it reminds me of that kind of a look and the little bit of bling here with the sparkly pieces I'm not putting them right in the center because I'll probably have a sentiment in there but I thought they add a little bit of something because it is a little bit country-ish and so this allows it to be a little bit more something. So here you saw that glitter piece already fell off. So I'm going to actually glue those down, but those will be the only ones I glue down. Everything else I'll just adhere on the back again, because this is just a card front. So it's just a piece of cardstock and we'll end up ad adhering this to a card base. Then um, this little piece fell off. So I was going to adhere that. And then I just make sure that all of the edges look good see if I have to add any adhesive on those that I didn't feel I did needed to. So again, I'm just going to fold everything over and then we'll use some tape. Again, I could have used adhesive sheets on the front of this card front. That would have prevented me from having to do all of this piece of it, but it works out just fine. As long as you plan ahead and use a card front instead of your card base, you should be just fine. The washi will curl if you have it cut off straight across. So that's why you want to either turn it over like I did and wrap it around or glue it down. Okay, and then I've decided I'm going to use a couple of dies for my sentiments. And in order to make these all 
coordinate nicely, I'm putting some double-sided tape, and this is just double-sided scotch tape. You can use whatever tape you have, or you can use, again, some adhesive sheets. I have adhesive sheets. I just don't know why I don't pull them out, but <laughs> my tape is all right in front of me, so I use sometimes what's in front of me, and so that means I need to move things around on my desk. Anyway, so what I decided to do here is I'm just putting a bunch of the washi on this scrap piece of paper, and I'm going to cut my dye sentiment out. And I'm going to use a dye sentiment that has a shadow piece to it. And then I'll make the shadow piece a color that coordinates. And then the wording itself will be in this washi tape color. And that'll just make it all tie together. And it's a really cool look. So I think you'll enjoy it. I tried not to use the dark ones of this because I think I'm going to use a dark background for this one. And so at the bottom half, I'm going to use the other washi. And these cards are going to be slightly different and they're going to have a totally different look, but it's really a very similar process. And so here's that ruler type washi and then the pretty peach polka dots. And the same thing here, I'm trying to use some of the lighter muted colors. Most of them were muted to begin with. And then we'll pull out some of our dyes later and determine what we want to have die cut out. You can also just cut shapes out with your washi card front. Instead of using it as a card front, you could just use it as a piece of pattern, like pattern paper almost. And you can cut shapes out of it and you can use it throughout your project. But for this today, I wanted to just show you what it looked like using it as a card front and then using a big die sentiment and show you how that looks. The beauty of washi as well is it's so easy to coordinate the inside of the card and the envelopes so easily with washi. You just put them kind of inside the card and I will show you how I did the cards. I will do my envelopes at another time but we won't have time today. This is a longer video than, <laughs> than I hoped. Just this takes a little bit of time just to Put all this washi on here even though I sped it up it does take a little bit of time so I'm just pushing everything down because I do have the double-sided tape and here's where I can actually cut it straight off I don't need to pull it around because I have that double-sided tape so it's got the extra adhesive and so you don't need to be perfectly accurate with that because you're going to die cut it out anyway so here I'm going to pull out all of my die sentiments and I keep them in these plastic envelopes and I have a magnet magnetic sheet behind it and that's how I keep my dies and this die sentiment says celebrate it's it's a nice one but it's longer than the piece that I use so I have to add a little bit more washi just to make this one usable but I think a celebrate card would be perfect for my collection and I think it'll get a lot of use because I did use a celebrate card yesterday for a friend of mine who got a promotion so celebrate cards are nice because you can use them as a birthday card in a pinch or you can use them for different events. So here we're just extending the size of that scrap piece so that we can make sure the celebrate fits and it'll fit perfectly. And I'll put that at an angle since it's angled also in the cart on the card front. Okay and for that second side I'm going to look for something a little bit smaller. I was going to use this hello. Sometimes I don't even know when to use hello cards. <laughs> I decided to try a different one. I guess it would be more of like a thinking of you. I do need happy anniversary now and again so I decided to use my happy anniversary and I'll cut the happy anniversary and the celebrate out of the washi scrap paper and then the shadow piece I will cut out of a solid piece of cardstock but we'll start with these and that one fell off. I use removable tape it's just scotch brand removable tape and I love it because it never rips my paper because I reuse it so often sometimes it doesn't stick as well as I'd like but it really just just needs to barely hold it down so that they don't shift while they are in my off nova die cutting machine and here you see i chose for the happy anniversary to go with black there's not a lot of black in the country style washi card front but there's enough that I thought it would be a pretty background and then I used this brown craft paper for the black and white card because it does have that little bit of brown and I thought it would be better than doing black because there's so much black in that card front so we'll see how those two come out <laughs> as uh, I just kind of decided and 
went with a couple scraps pieces that I had. I always keep my scraps right in front of me in a jar and that makes all the difference in the world on whether or not I'm going to use my scraps. Here I'm going to push out the celebrate and you'll be able to see how beautiful that looks out of that washi. I'm kind of second guessing whether I should have done the black but I still think it's a nice contrast. And then for this one there's really not a ton of black in there. There's a little bit in the ruler, there's a little bit in the sparkly washi that I used but it looks a little stark to me but we'll remedy that a little bit later. So this is a very detailed dye and so I'm trying my best. I could be a little bit forceful and sometimes I will break my sentiment so I am doing my very best to make sure I pull this out without breaking anything and I do have success with that and I bring out my craft tweezers because it's just getting stuck on, on itself it's really not where it's not cut out it's just stuck on itself and so you get the gist of it I still have to poke out all the dots and things like that but it's gonna look really good I do think that I'm not sure I love that black so I'm like maybe I should use something sparkly Maybe I can use a shimmery black sheet. I go through kind of all my shimmery cardstock to see what I might have available because I'm not sure I'm going to like this matte black. But I didn't find anything I liked, so I take out my Wink of Stella, which I love Wink of Stella. If anybody's watched my videos before, you know I will pull this out, and every time I do, it just makes me happy to use it. Because this is going to add a little sparkle, so it will kind of coordinate with those sparkly, thin washi that we used. And then I decide to add it just a little bit to those plain matte washi tape that I used and then I'm also going to put it on the brown paper the craft craft brown paper and it will just give it a little bit of sparkle and there's nothing wrong with sparkle even if you were to use this as a masculine card sparkle is fair game for masculine cards in my opinion so I'm going to put a little bit of my barely art precision craft glue on here I love this glue for gluing on sentiments again you could have used your double-sided adhesive sheets before you you'd got die cut these out and that would have helped you save a step as well. I pretty much always use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to glue down intricate dies. I find it to be fairly easy. Now here I'm trying to poke out all the little spaces and things like that between the letters. I think I got them all and so I'm going to see what this looks like and that gave the background piece, the shadow piece, a time to dry as well. So that's the Wink of Stella. It doesn't take very long to dry to begin with but the Wink of Stella is dry now. And I'm going to add a little bit of this Art Precision Craft Glue on to my sentiment and I'll glue that onto the shadow piece. I forgot one more. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get it out while I'm holding it and I'm afraid the glue is going to dry so I'm just going to glue it down. The Barely Art Precision Craft glue dries a little bit faster than some of my other glues so uh, sometimes I can't fiddle around with things with that glue so I waited and I'm just going to pull it out here and it worked out just fine. I'm just going to use a rag to get the, some of that extra glue that I had on there and I think that came out really pretty that happy anniversary. I've decided that I'm going to use some of this vellum and the reason why you'd use vellum behind a sentiment is when you have a background that's very busy and my backgrounds with all that washi is very busy and so sometimes that sentiment could get lost. So I pulled out some of my dyes and these are going to just give it a little bit of diffusion of that all that color and busyness. So that bigger one is going to be for the happy anniversary and the longer one is going to be for the celebrate and I think that'll give it just enough and it won't take away too much from that background either. So here I'm going to adhere my card front to my card base but it actually I didn't measure it very well earlier so I am going to have to trim off just a little bit of that so that it measures a little bit more accurately all the way around and then here see how that just diffuses it enough where you're not going to lose that sentiment and it's a beautiful sentiment so you don't want to get that lost and here I'm just adding some of my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue on the back of that instead of popping it up sometimes I'll pop that up but with some foam tape but I didn't feel I needed it here and so this is where your little cutting mat can help uh, when you're trying to line up a sentiment use your tools especially if it's right right there in front of you this is my other one and you can see here I'm going to turn it and make it a horizontal card and then again I think that the vellum just helps that sentiment stand out a little bit more and I'm using just a little bit of double-sided tape to adhere the celebrate to the vellum and then for this one I do think I am going to pop that sentiment onto some foam tape but first I want to make sure that my hard front is going to fit and in this case I'm going to use my Ranger multi-medium matte finish glue. This glue stays dry a little bit longer than the Barely Art Precision Craft glue and so I can kind of play around with it a little longer and decide where I want it to go. Here I'm kind of like ooh 
I really don't like how the bottom of that looks. So I decided to push it up and we're going to create a little bit more fun to this card, but really we're covering up what I think it just doesn't look good. This is the beauty of card making is nobody needs to know that it had kind of a wavy bottom and it didn't really line up very well with my card base. So I just glued that down and then I looked at it and said, you know what, I think it could use another one. And so I'm going to use that slate gray color as well. So it gives it a little bit of bling, makes it a little bit more interesting and it then we're a little bit more symmetrical all the way around. And here I did, again, I said I was going to use some of the foam tape and that just will pop it up a little bit away from that card base as well. And I like to make sure I use a lot of foam tape because I don't want anything to start to sag, especially because I send most of mine through the mail. And then here Here's where, as I mentioned, it's so easy to coordinate the inside of the card with the outside of the card. So I'm just using some of the washi tape. I'm using some of the bigger ones, just popping them on there and I'll, I'll end up gluing them down because I'm not going to be able to wrap this around like I was when we used a card front. This because this is actually on the card base. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of the sparkly washi. Might as well make it fully gorgeous. When I'm going to do the inside of a card, I do tend to do the same two corners and that's because my two whomever is usually in that top left corner and then my from Jen is at the bottom right corner and so I leave those blank and then I usually just do those two corners and I love how that coordinates. I do think this needs a little bit more bling even if this is a masculine card, you can put some of these black gems on there and I think it will give it just a little something. There is a lot of that vellum showing and so might as well add some to that. I could have added some around it. I could have used Nuvo drops or any kind of drops that you that you use, but I just put three of them on there and it adds just a little bit something. So back to this other card, I'm about to adhere this and I had to flip it over because it does have some words and some numbers and I don't love the way the edges look and I probably over tightly wound those around. I've decided that in right before <laughs> I put the glue down. I said, you know what? Let me change the corners. So I'm going to get my corner punch out and we'll see if I can give this a little bit more interest because it's a little plain right now. Corner punches for me, I love the way it changes a card almost entirely. And I know you're not supposed to do these upside down, but I like to see inside of it what they're going to look like. And I also, it tells me that I have it all the way to the tip and that way I don't cut them short, which I've been known to do in my... <laughs> crafting days. So this just makes sure we have them all done and they're all done accurately. And so I will also do this with my card base. I like when the card base and the card front matches or at least coordinates because they'll be slightly offset from each other and it just gives the card a totally different look. I love the way corner punches look on a card and I forgot one. <laughs> okay so now I will put the glue on and again I'm using my Ranger multimedia matte finish glue because again it'll give me a little bit of wiggle room so I can play with it a little bit and see where I want it to exactly go. But doesn't that look like it just gives it a totally different look. I think that looks fantastic. So I'm a big fan of the corner rounders, the corner punches, anything I can do I will do. So here I've decided instead of popping this onto some foam tape because it's a pretty big size vellum there so I don't think you need any more definition there or any more dimension. So I'm just going to put that and you don't want to put it on the vellum because you will see that glue so I put it wherever the sentiment was. And again I'm using my craft mat to line that up a little bit. And then I bring out my gems but I didn't really like how any of the colors coordinated. I didn't think they really did coordinate and so I'm going to pop up just just a few of these like diamond colored gems but they ha they're a little bit iridescent so they have a little bit of pink and blue in them and so that goes fairly well and I have a dog hair <laughs> behind one of these gems and again only we know that and once we take care of it, it nobody needs to know. So with this one because it is a little bit of a planar card I decided to go hog wild with my gems and instead of just three I'm going to put a whole bunch of them on there. So I decided that I wanted to put quite a few two little ones and a big one on the bottom and I double guessed it and I was like is this a big one or a little one but there they are just slightly different. So I think that looks really pretty. I liked those corners and then here you'll see I pull out that scrap and I'm just going to make four corners with my scrap paper and because it's got that cute little scalloped edge 
I'll be able to create that with this scrap piece. I save every bit of scrap as I'm doing a project. At the end, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily kept that in my scrap bin, but I do keep it while I'm doing a card because sometimes I can use it for the envelope or I can use it for inside the card. You just never know where you're going to use that little piece. So I never throw away even my little pieces that I trim off, you know, that little like quarter of an inch. Sometimes I use that on the inside of the card and it's just enough to coordinate everything together. I love coordinating insides and outsides and envelopes. It is my favorite thing to do with card making. I feel like that's kind of what differentiates what you can do when you buy a card. A lot of cards don't coordinate the envelope and the inside and the outside and the whole bit. So I think in card card making and card crafting, that's what kind of sets it apart. So again, you know, the ones at the top, I'm making them a little bit smaller. The ones at the bottom, I made a little bit bigger and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be one way or another. It's just I wanted to give myself space to be able to write at the at the top. So and also it's a little bit harder to navigate those. So I I just wrote in the shape and then I'm cutting it out partially and then gluing it and then cutting off the other piece with my little, these are my Tim Holtz small scissors. I love them for fussy cutting. I love them for getting into tight places. I just make sure I don't use it. Even though they're titanium, I try not to use them with sticky stuff. I have one set sticky thing, sticky set of scissors. And then here I almost forgot to cut off the edges of this, but I noticed it when I shut the card, I was like, huh, what's those things hanging out? (laughs) And here it is all finished. And I think that is a really cool looking card. And then again, I use the same technique, but look how different these cards are. Washi is really a cool card crafting tool. And look at all of that fun. So between the gems and the washi and the sparkly washi, and then you got your inside all coordinated. And then that Wink Estella back there really looks good too. Same thing here. Look at the Wink Estella on that Celebrate. That looks really pretty. And those big gems. I think that's a really cool card. And I think that would be a perfect masculine card for someone uh, that's celebrating a, a milestone or that's having a birthday. I can, I'd stamp usually a, a sentiment or a saying on the inside. So thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you would, please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and share this with your craft-minded friends. They might enjoy this too. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I'm a small channel and all your subscriptions really do help and it helps you too because then you're notified when I have new content. And if you want a true notification, you hit that notification bell and it tells you every time I put out new content, which is twice weekly. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for joining today.